I'm the city councilman of Richmond and the director of Metro Vancouver. I want to tell you a little story about how Richmond got involved in fighting to save Site C. We are beset by the Fraser River Port Authority wanting to build on the Class 1 farmland in Richmond and Delta. And they bought land secretly that they intend to develop for port expansion. We looked at the province of British Columbia and suddenly realized there were only two places in British Columbia where there is a fairly large amount of Class 1, 2, and 3 alluvial soils. They're in the lower Fraser Valley, in Richmond, Surrey, and Delta, and they're in the Peace River. Both are threatened, one by Port Metro Vancouver and the other by the Site C Dam. So in January, Richmond City Council passed the following resolution and we sent it to the provincial government. That the city write a letter to the province of BC requesting a moratorium on the construction and development of Site C until the end of 2015. The resolution was that we wanted a moratorium against the development of Site C to the end of 2015. And the proposed project we referred to the BC Utilities Commission for review and consultation. Well, that was in January. In March, we got a letter from the provincial government. They never answered our question about referring it to the BC Utilities Commission or postponing it. They just told us of the wonders of the Site C Dam. <laughs> they said electricity demand is expected to increase by 40% in the next 20 years, and that justifies the Site C Dam. Well, we got to thinking Metro Vancouver is trying to reduce. The, the power needs of Metro Vancouver by 40% in the next 20 years. If we reduce our power needs and they increase the power capacity by 40%, what on earth do we need an extra 80% of power for? Right. So we sent them another resolution. So this time we said, please have a moratorium until the end of 2017 and let the BC Utilities Corporation sort this out. Yes. <laughs> They went ahead with a plan. And if any of you have followed the legislature on uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week, uh, they pushed through the Site C Dam and uh, tried to belittle the agriculture critics for the NDP, who was critical of the development of the farmland in the Fraser River Estuary. Christy Clark said, and I want to quote, you don't support port expansion, you don't support Site C expansion. You are wanting to destroy thousands and thousands of jobs. And presumably, we're destroying the BC, BC economy. So if you support saving Site C, if you support saving the Fraser River Class 1 farmlands, saving Site C lands, you're responsible for destroying thousands and thousands of jobs and destroying the BC economy. And many of you noticed lately, since the forest fires are raging in California, and they came up the, uh, all the way up through Washington or Oregon, and we spent $200 million fighting forest fires in B.C. That not many of these politicians are climate change deniers anymore. The climate change deniers have changed their spots. They are now economy change deniers. They will not accept that to save this planet, we have to change the economy. <laughs> dams and destroying farmland in order to produce LNG to ship to other countries to burn and create more, more carbon dioxide and more uh, greenhouse gases. When that happens, we get more forest fires. Don't they connect the circle? You destroy the planet, you destroy the atmosphere, and you get climate change in return, and it gets worse and worse and worse. The interesting thing is, the, the economy they're trying to protect we only had it for the last 50 or 60 years. When I was in MLA in 1974 and we brought in the Agricultural Land Act, we were producing 86% of our vegetables. You heard from Wednesday talking about this. That's gone down. We could do that again, as long as we keep the Peace River country from producing vegetables. Our problem has been we got cut up in this export and import market, and we've been depending on California. They had to take 500,000 acres out of production this year because it's turned to desert. And you know what they're doing that 500,000 acres? One, one big farmer had an almond farm and he recognizes that he can't grow almonds anymore. He's put up solar panels and he's creating electricity and making more money than he did as a farmer. They don't need our power. They've got sunlight. So we don't need to produce power from the 
site C dam to sell to the United States. We have many, many alternatives to the site C dam, and I'm going to tell you about a few. It's estimated that the site C dam will produce power for 450,000 homes. The Hard Zero plant is already in operation. It's capable of powering 760,000 homes. They don't use it for that, but it could. So they want to shut it down. Yes, it turns natural gas. But is it better to burn natural gas to produce our own power than to destroy the Peace River farmlands so they can set up power plants and produce liquid natural gas to burn someplace else? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Metro Vancouver already has waste to energy plants that produce a 16, enough power for 16,000 homes. And we're producing new waste to energy by, by uh, uh, burning our garbage through uh, anaerobic digesters, collecting the natural gas and creating compost. So that's enough for another, uh, let's see, 24,000 homes. In Richmond, we've converted uh, one, one area to geothermal. And that's enough for 12,000 homes. But here's the catch. Metro Vancouver is working with UBC, with Dr. Stephen Shepard, from the community developing community energy guide estimates. And he has given a preliminary estimate that with solar power in Vancouver, we could produce enough power for 900,000 homes. Whoa. Yeah. Welcome on the river hydro that's already existing, 7,500 homes. Industrial energy cup recovery, 7,500 homes. Livestock biogas, right now just going up into the air, 1,000 homes, 17,000 homes. Forestry and bio biomass, 26,000 homes. His estimate totals 960,000 homes can be powered in Metro Vancouver with alternative energy. We don't need the site sea dam for the people of British Columbia. This is where the population is. We've got a ranch at Cash Creek. We're not even that great. We've already had solar power for 20 years. They can do it here. Yeah. Woo! I just want to close by giving a, 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 a comparison on the value of the agricultural land. Yeah. Site C that's a little different than what Lindy presented. Basically, We've got class one and two soils, but lots of water, not affected by drought. We, we have class one and two soils along the piece. Class one and two soils are not affected by drought. As many says, they're capable of producing food for them. But they're also capable of sequestering carbon dioxide, and that's not in the equation. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that trees sequester upwards from 5,000 pounds to 10,000 pounds of carbon dioxide a year into the ground, deep through the root system, deep into the soil. There are trees on the land to be flooded. They're busy cutting them down. You heard about the eagle nests that went last week. They're cutting the trees down. Yay. Agriculture, the Rodale, Rodale Institute estimates that traditional agriculture before we started using fossil fuel fertilizers, chemical sprays, herbicides, and pesticides, was and is capable of sequestering 3,500 pounds of carbon dioxide to the soil per acre per year. For 30,000 acres, that is a carbon sink for 50,000 tons of carbon dioxide a year. That is one of the costs of Site C they're not considering. We're losing the farmland, we're losing the ability to feed ourselves, we are also increasing the carbonation of the atmosphere. It is not clean power, my friends. Site C is dirty power, and there are letters on record from international experts that say that the only hydropower that is acceptable for generating electricity is short dams on deep channels where they are not destroying farmland or trees. And there are some of these, some, some around. But when you destroy large acreages of farmland and large acreages of trees, then you are destroying a, 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 a land base that is part of the carbon sink that feeds our climate and keeps climate change at bay. In closing, I just want to say that what we found last week in Victoria, that there's no much wonder that they want to flood Site C 
and they want to build on the Fraser River farmland. They are so caught up in shipping coal and oil and LNG and all these damaging products that are destroying our planet that our governments, whether it's federal or provincial, has absolutely no soul. They don't care. That's what we're up against. It's not time people did care Save Site C is capable of producing the freshest, most nutritious foods that we can plant anywhere on this planet. The class one soils of the Fraser Valley and the Bays River are the best soils in Canada, better than anything they've got on the Niagara Peninsula 